Hi, good evening, everybody. So great to see you. Uh, adequate notice of this meeting, as required by the Open Public Meetings Act, was provided through the posting, mailing, and filing of the annual notice of regularly scheduled meetings of the Town Council on December 11, 2019. The notice was, on that date, posted on the bulletin board in the Municipal Building, provided to the Westfield Leader and the Star-Ledger, and filed with the Clerk of the Town of Westfield. Mrs. Rowley, may I have a roll call? Mayor Brindle? Here. Council Members Habagood? Parmalee? Here. Agrippo? Here. Katz? Here. Mackey? Here. Contract? Here. Dardia? Here. Boyce? Here. Please rise. We'll be for invocation by Councilman Dardia and remain standing for this salute. We seek blessings on the tasks before us. Bless our efforts with clear insight, our deliberations with wisdom, our work with clarity and accuracy, and our decisions with impartiality. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And uh, tonight I have the great pleasure of reading two proclamations. Um, and I'm going to ask the folks from the Westfield Neighborhood Council to come up first as we celebrate their 50th anniversary. Well, these ladies are quite fixtures at the, which one? I'm going to use this one. Which one do you want me to use? Do you, do you guys have a preference? Okay. These ladies are quite the fixtures at the Westfield Neighborhood Council, and many of us had the pleasure of attending their lovely gala on Saturday. Was that Saturday, right? Yeah. We're celebrating their 50 years, where we got to hear so much about the history of everything that you've done in the neighborhood. So this is a real pleasure for all for us to be able to um, read this and present this with you this evening. So, whoops, wrong one. So. Whereas the Westfield Neighborhood Council was founded in 1969 as a private nonprofit community based social service organization whose mission is to empower all members, children, youth, and adults through quality educational and direct hands on outreach as people strive with pride to reach their full human potential. And whereas the Westfield Neighborhood Council is primarily funded by private donations. And whereas, beyond serving its immediate neighborhood, the Westfield Neighborhood Council creates a rare opportunity to unify members of Westfield from all different backgrounds and income brackets. And whereas, everyone is welcome to participate in Westfield Neighborhood Council programs, volunteer at the council, or simply socialize with fellow community members. And whereas, currently the Westfield Neighborhood Council offers nearly one dozen low cost or free programs to about 100 individuals, including Homework Assistance Club, High school and, and intermediate school students meet with adult and peer mentors at WNC to receive help with their homework in all academic subjects. Let's Dance Lessons, funded by a Union County Heart Grant, Imani Carter and Kalia Wallace instruct kids age four to 14 in ballet, hip hop and spiritual dance at no charge. And I've seen it and it's amazing. <laughs> the lessons include an annual recital held at Tamaquas Elementary School in March. Neighborly Gathering, a neighborly gathering for seniors each Friday at 11 a.m. that includes music, food, and games. For a minimal fee, the group participates in fun days such as bingo, raffle, a dance in May, and a bus trip in October. Vegetables for seniors. During the summer, WNC members tend to a small garden in the backyard to grow fresh vegetables, which are then distributed to seniors in the community. The Mitzvah Core Project. During the 2019-20 school year, Temple Emanuel selected the WNC as its main organization for Mitzvah Corps, a community outreach volunteer organization for 8th and 9th grade religious school students. Through activities like providing technology advice to seniors, the kids are developing relationships with people of all generations and backgrounds to build stronger ties within Westfield. And whereas, the Westfield Neighborhood Council has been conducting many activities this past year in celebration of its 50th anniversary. And now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Mayor Shelley Brindle, on behalf of a grateful community, hereby congratulates the Westfield Neighborhood Council on the occasion of their 50th anniversary. 
Further, I offer heartfelt thanks to the past and present members of this great organization for their selfless service to our community. Thank you. Who's the president? I, um, my name is Aisha Qualis. I'm the president of the West Hill Neighborhood Council. I have not been there for 50 years, <laughs> obviously, but these young ladies have been there for 50 years. So we want to just thank Westfield for acknowledging us for our 50 years here in the town of Westfield. And we just want to thank the community and we are ready to see what the next 50 year will bring us. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right, thank you ladies. Great job. So this next one has very special meaning for me, and I'm going to ask that um, Councilman Mark Parmalee and Councilman Mike Dardia come up here and um, with me to do this one. And uh, unfortunately, Councilwoman Linda Hapgood is not here tonight, um, and she's kind of sick about that she's missing this proclamation in particular. Um, we are Washington School parents, and. Um, <laughs> I don't actually think it's normally possible to have four parents from one school be up on the dais up here. And Linda helped us out because she was in Ward 2. Her kids all went through Washington and then moved to Ward 1. And it is quite remarkable that four of us are Washington school parents. For those that you know, might know, Mark was the star of the Washington school show. <laughs> Years. I played the background. I was in the chorus. Mike got out of it, right? Did you do your thing? Yeah, I think I did one year. You did. Plus. <laughs> the stage crew. Linda was a dancer, a producer, a director, and my husband was a star a few times. And his job was to mercilessly, day. mercilessly tease Dr. Perry. So um, uh, anyway, it is quite a remarkable accomplishment, and so we're so proud, and it's so great to see many familiar faces in the audience. So Dr. Perry, and whoever else, you guys come up so we can read this proclamation on your behalf. And I want to acknowledge Dr. Dolan back there as well. Do you want to come up here, Dr. Dolan? Come on. And I don't think any of us are surprised by this recognition. And we, you have worked so hard for this. It so, it's, gives me such pleasure. One of my favorite mayoral duties is tonight. So <laughs> anyway, so I have great pleasure to read this. Whereas the United States Department of Education's National Blue Ribbon Schools Program, created in 1982, recognizes outstanding school achievement in two special categories. And whereas Washington Elementary School was named a National Blue Ribbon School in the category of exemplary high performing school, one of only nine schools in New Jersey to be recognized in 2019. And whereas Blue Ribbon Schools serve as shining examples of excellence for other schools throughout the nation. And whereas National Blue Ribbon Schools are honored at an annual award ceremony in Washington, D.C., where each receives a plaque and flag to signify its exemplary status. And whereas on November 15, 2019, Washington School Principal Dr. Andrew Perry, fifth grade teacher Matthew Cognetti, he was my kid's teacher, and <laughs> Superintendent Dr. Margaret Dolan traveled to Washington, D.C. to accept the award on behalf of the school community from National Blue Ribbon School Program Director Abba Kumi. And whereas the town of Westfield wishes to memorialize the outstanding achievements of the students, teachers, and administration of Washington Elementary School and recognize the esteemed distinction of being named a National Blue Ribbon School. Now therefore be it proclaimed that I, Mayor Shelley Brindle, on behalf of a proud community, hereby congratulates the entire Washington Elementary School community on being named a National Blue Ribbon School. And further, I hereby thank the dedicated educators who led the way. So thank you all.
Is it true you got a homework pass if you showed up tonight? Is that true? <laughs> so I'm going to let Dr. Perry make remarks. And then before you leave, I would love all the students and teachers to come up and we get one big picture, if that's OK. OK, great. <laughs> and by the way, I tried my best to convince Mark to do a little performance. <laughs> 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 It's okay if I say some stuff? Oh, I want you to, absolutely. I've prepared a short 45-minute statement. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to stand here? <laughs> okay. Make Feel sure free. <laughs> I really wanted um, a very nice loose leaf that I could turn pages on, just like the uh, president's legal team or the house managers. <laughs> but this is, this is what I have. Mayor Brindle? Councilwomen, councilmen, thank you for inviting us to your busy meeting tonight. It's an honor to receive this proclamation from our town. Thank you, Dr. Dolan, staff, parents, students, for being here to help us celebrate this happy event. Yes, I did offer a homework pass, but it was just to delay it for one night. It's not to get out of the homework. <clears throat> we realize that we are part of a large household, Westfield, has six elementary schools, and you love us all. And just like children in a family, we all shine brightly at different times. Although our parents and students have heard the stories of why we received this wonderful award, I realize our council members may not. The main criteria was having a PTO president who was a dad, and whose wife then went on to become the mayor of the town. <laughs> Washington School history. So, that was, um, male. Oh. First. Male, what I say? <laughs> oh, no. First male president, yes. 93 elementary schools in New Jersey have won this award in the 37 years since the Blue Ribbon Program began in 1982. This year, I just want to give you a sense of um, the statistics. This year, there were 220. United States public elementary schools nominated for a Blue Ribbon Award, 220. There are 90,000 elementary schools in the United States. Seven elementary schools were nominated this year in New Jersey, and there are 2,000 elementary schools in New Jersey. The two main ingredients for the Blue Ribbon of Excellence nomination are high student achievement and high student growth from one year to the next. I'm going to explain each just briefly. So let's look at high achievement for a moment. On the most recent New Jersey student learning assessments for fourth grade language arts, the percent of pupils who met or exceeded expectations for the state was 57%. For the district, 77%. For Washington school, 96%. Right on cue, that was very good. <laughs> There's another one coming, so get ready. <laughs> for fourth grade math, the percent of pupils who met or exceeded expectations for the state was 51%. For the district, 78%. For Washington school, 98%. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> and what about student growth year to year? For language arts, 41% of the pupils in our district showed high growth from third to fourth grade. 60% of the fourth graders at Washington School showed high growth. For math, 38% of the pupils in our district showed high growth from third grade to fourth grade. 54% of the fourth graders at Washington School showed high growth. However, knowledge by itself is not sufficient. Eleanor Roosevelt said, never mistake knowledge for wisdom. One helps you make a living, the other helps you make a life. Miles Kingston expressed it a bit differently. He said, knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in the fruit salad. That's good. Few things bring me more pleasure than making Dr. Dolan laugh. <laughs> We do a lot of things that will never show up as achievement or academic growth, such as 
Concerts, sing-alongs, art shows, field day, mindfulness, yoga, makerspace, after-school enrichment, scouts, a camping trip, making extra sandwiches for St. Joe's, school safeties, teacher treasures, our school garden, a new playground, learning about food allergies, game nights, Artsonia, Spanish, our guidance program, a school store scholarship, the craft fair, the women's tea, poetry, the senior clap out, community service night, and many more. This has been a fabulous role for us. 13 months ago, we were invited to apply for the Blue Ribbon Award. We spent four months completing the application. Then we waited. Then we edited. Then we waited three more months until the official announcement in late September. We waited two more months until we went to Washington, D.C. to hear Secretary DeVos and receive a plaque and a flag. A month later, we had a great school celebration with the Board of Education, our staff, our students, and our parents. The next day, we were off to another award ceremony in Trenton. We have received letters of congratulations, including from President Trump and a proclamation from the New Jersey legislature. But we have saved the best for last. After tonight, we go back to our quiet little school and get ready for our Valentine's Day sing-along. Viva Valentine! <laughs> Our charity volleyball game, the Wax Museum, science and math night, and our usual daily routine. This past weekend was the 73rd Washington School Show. One anonymous advertisement read, in case you have been living under a rock, Dr. Perry wants you to know that Washington is a blue ribbon school. Yes, I am a proud principal. Thank you for this recognition and for all that you do to make Westfield a town that people want to live in and stay in. Thank you very much. Why don't, if we can take a quick picture and then you guys can leave and we'll get on to the business at hand. So, um, <laughs> let me do it right up front here. Is that what we should do? Oh, those scores are incredible. Up here, down. Can I mean, the gap between the scores. That's incredible. Contract. Hi. Hi. We'll love guys. to chat with you. We want to add. We are a recycling presentation to your list. There's a tomacus picture. Franklin. So I can I follow up with you? <laughs> Congratulations.
I sure will. I sure will. <laughs> Accepted to a few schools. Um, he's still waiting on uh, like six others, but Indiana is at the top. I need to carry my new tower. Is he not here too or no? No, no, he's not. Oh. Okay. How are you doing? All right, good. Mark is a soul. Yeah, yeah, you got named in that right resolution. Look at him. Yeah, um, hey, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations. Thank you. Great to meet you. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's really fun. Nice to meet you. So yeah, uh, no. So the big parent, the big parents. Oh, yeah. It's all uh, put on. Very good. Um, that was an actor. You have to say this. I, they never let. All me right. Say so. Um, <laughs> wow, we know how to clear out a room, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kelly. Um, okay, you know what? So, Jim, we're going to go, right? All right, I'll keep mine very short tonight. There's other presentations after me. Um, just want to mention one thing to everybody. This is 2020, and this is the year of the census. Um, and I'm going to be mentioning the census every meeting for the rest of the year. Uh, to remind everybody to um, obviously be counted. Uh, we just actually uh, opened up a new um, uh, portion of our website today for census resources is on our front page of our website and one of our carousels. Um, and there's information uh, on there to learn about the program, when things are coming out. Um, and we'll be you know, reminding everybody all year long to make sure everyone's counted. I know we talked about the census is important. Maybe we can get a population up to a certain amount to get other benefits, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, but it's important. So as of today, um, westfieldnj.gov backslash census 2020. Um, that's the, uh, the link. Uh, it's on the front page website. And uh, we'll be mentioning more each meeting uh, and uh, reminding people when things should be coming to their home. If need be, we, we, we can actually have uh, host meetings here at Town Hall to uh, you know, make sure people know how to fill the forms out, how to do things. Um, but it's important that um, uh, everyone be counted. Westfield historically has had very good counts for the census, so um, so that's very good. But we want to maintain that uh, for 2020. So that's the big the big news for tonight. And they're looking for census workers too, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah, and that's actually on the website. There's actually a link to. Um, uh, the uh, the page that actually if you want to volunteer for the census or work for the census uh, bureau you can do that as well that's so. great thank you Thanks. and what Jim was alluding to while well, um, the census and to be counted is obviously really important for all the representation reasons and so many others but um, those that know there are liquor license laws and we get a liquor license for every uh, 3,000 residents so we are currently at about 31,000 if we can get to 33,000 we get another liquor license for our town <laughs> so that is just one more good reason why everybody should be counted That's so everything counts um, okay I, I give me bear with me because I've been had a really busy two weeks and I just want to like get it all out and tell everybody what has been going on so um, uh, so I have had been involved, gone to a ton of meetings and met with a lot of other people. So I continue to meet with a lot of other mayors and go to conferences and so forth because I think it's really important that we get outside perspective on issues, uh, key issues for Westfield and really learn best practices and from the experience of others. So last week I was in New Brunswick and I attended the New Jersey planning conference on Thursday and Friday, which was actually incredibly helpful. Talked to a lot, a lot of experts, but two in particular, that two panels were particularly very important to me. One is about smart redevelopment and learning from other towns about what they're doing, about revitalizing their downtowns and about redevelopment areas in particular. And the other one was liquor license reform, um, where a coalition of mayors can play a big part to push some legislation about um, uh, updating our very antiquated liquor laws. And both of these things are important as we talk about and think about how we're going to implement the master plan reexamination this afternoon. I spent, along with a few others, uh, the afternoon with Metuchen's Mayor uh, Bush. 
Uh, if any of you guys have been to Metuchen, it's actually a very, it's a small microcosm of Westfield. It's literally half the size and population and in scale, but they have almost identical issues to we have. So it's been a really great relationship to have with them and really share a lot of uh, issues that we're both facing relative to performing arts spaces. They just bought their movie theater and trying to convert it to a performing arts space, redevelopment and their parking solutions. So this stuff, it's fairly incredibly um, uh, informative. And then last weekend, I attended a meeting with uh, Congressman Malinowski. He had a mayor's breakfast, and we discussed <clears throat> transportation, infrastructure, New Jersey Transit, and um, and he's been very proactive in providing us a point person to identify grants that are, well, that are available to us for a variety of things. I asked a lot about the arts and historic preservation. And by the way, everybody in New Jersey in his district has a deer problem, so I learned that as well. Um, and then also met with State Senator Keene last week to talk about the Raritan Valley Line, our one-seat ride progress, and really um, he's a member of the State Arts Commission, so also talk to him about potential grants for the transformation of the Rialto. And speaking of the Rialto, I know I mentioned last meeting that we are in the process of selecting a consultant that has specific experience in renovation space to conduct a full assessment and feasibility study to see if it's uh, if transforming the Rialto in a performing arts center is viable, and if so, what would be needed in order to do that. Uh, we went out for RFP. We should have the consultant selected by next week, um, and we've already applied for a grant to cover the cost. So we hope to have that assessment done probably by June. Uh, switching gears a bit, um, I mentioned last week, and I know I mentioned at the MLK Day, the, uh, the formation of a new Human Relations Advisory Committee. Uh, it's going to be introduced by ordinance next month and a stepped up effort to foster an environment of inclusivity, mutual understanding, and respect. Um, the HRAC is intended to serve in an advisory capacity to promote these values and will be comprised of seven resident members and two alternates. Uh, the group will work with myself, the town council, and I spoke to Dr. Dolan about it last week, and she wants to be a, a part of it as well. So we'll help with the Board of Education to improve access to programs, recommend policies, promote inclusivity, and provide education and awareness within Westfield. I bring it up again today because I just want everybody to be aware the application process is open. We're looking for uh, the diverse volunteers that reflect the diversity of what we want to be um, talking about as part of the mission. So uh, Wednesday, February 5th is the application deadline. So if you or if you know anybody that would be interested, please encourage them to apply. Uh, tonight, we're also doing something very important. We are introducing an ordinance to formalize the Access and Inclusivity Council. Uh, that started last year as a mayor, as an advisory council, and it has made substantial progress and some great milestones in the community, which I don't even know if a lot of people are aware of because a lot of it has been behind the scenes. Um, they've advocated for the hiring of the town's first ADA coordinator, which we've done. Uh, they developed the town's first ADA grievance procedure. They've advocated for dis disability right imp rights improvements as a component of both the park strategic plan and the master plan reexamination process. I was very proud in the, ma in the parks plan that one of the first and highest priorities was um, ADA compliance and inclusivity um, throughout everything that we do, which uh, and it's a, a big result of the AIC's advocacy. Um, they've also helped to organize the adaptive skate sessions at the Westfield Rink, promoted Autism Awareness Month and Stuttering Awareness Month initiatives. So a big thanks to the members of the ISC and in particular co-chairs Julie Steinberg and Jen grismala Lou. They've been uh, really the ones that are keeping this uh, ball rolling and the good news is we like to be able to formalize something this through an ordinance so it will be here way beyond any of us. So thrilled with the progress they've made. Um, on the Westfield 300 front, it's underway. I hope everybody's noticed the flags all over town. They look great. The walkway up through the 9-11 Memorial to the train station. So we've raised a flag, and I had the great privilege of welcoming the first Westfield baby of 2020 on behalf of the town. Jacob Cohen was born on January 2nd to parents Matthew and Samantha and big sister Eliana. I met the whole Cohen family last week and present them with a commemorative gift, gift basket and a big thanks to the Westfield branch of Two, River, Two Rivers Community Bank. They donated a $300 savings bond for Jacob. 
Uh, we also, um, as part of our volunteer application process, we did a call out for Westfield 300 volunteers. We had over 50 people signed up and they all met last weekend um, about all volunteering for various Westfield 300 initiatives. Uh, our co-chairs had a very productive meeting with them and I, they were all ecstatic and I think given quite the assignments, I saw some follow up. And just want to remind everybody, if you're still interested in, in volunteering in any capacity, whether it's for a one day event or for a specific program, you can also still supply, uh, apply to be a volunteer on the website. Um, but something very important, because there seems to be a theme and it has to do with food and drinks. Um, there is a Colonial Food and Drinks outing on February 23rd at 16 Prospect, which Westfield 300 is presenting in partnership with the Historical Society and the Miller Quarry House Museum. It includes a discussion of Westfield's taverns and inns over the years. There's going to be a whole menu that's uh, uh, you know, revolutionary, if you will, and tickets are available on the Historical Society's website. So please sign up. It should be a really fun kickoff. And closing a bit, I want to provide a big thank you to everybody that coordinated the amazing MLK Day events, and in particular, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Association. It was quite a heartwarming, inspiring day. We started, like many of us, with the pancake breakfast at the community center. Um, and then I went on to the MLK Service Project that to organized by volunteers Jen Gilman and Lee Schaefer. Then we marched up East, East Broad Street with Congressman Alanowski, and we ended with the MLK Service at the Presbyterian Church, where it was featuring great prayer, amazing music, and lots of fellowship. And then this past weekend on Saturday night, I was able to uh, swear in Mike Darty and I were there for the Westfield Volunteer Rescue Squad dinner. I had the pleasure of administering the oath of office to the newly sworn officers. So um, great, really grateful. We are very lucky to have a volunteer rescue squad in Westfield. Uh, many of them don't even live here, but they offer countless hours of service to our community. And something also very important, Chief Battalora. He recently announced two promotions in his department. Marcin Kapka and Nicole Stavali were both promoted to the rank of lieutenant, effective January 13th. Lieutenant Kapka was appointed to the Westfield Police Department in 2003. He's a highly decorated officer, having received the prestigious Medal of Honor, along with another of other, a number of other commendations. And Lieutenant Stavali was appointed to the Westfield Police Department in 2005. She graduated first in her class at the Union County Police Academy. And very proud to say she is the first female lieutenant and the highest ranking female officer in the history of the Westfield Police Department. So the fun part is actually going to be on March 10th when we're going to formally swear them in. And then you'll hear all how fabulous they are. And we're very lucky to have them as new lieutenants in the department. And I'm almost done. It's been a very busy two weeks. Um, if you haven't read the park strategic plan, please do so. It's on our website and it uh, was presented to the Recreation Commission at their last meeting and it is going to be presented again. Uh, I think they'll be discussing it at the um, Recre Recreation Commission on February 3rd. Please come, they'll have public comment. But most importantly, we're going to have the consultant that helped do this whole thing. Brandstetter Carroll, they're going to be here at our council meeting on February 11th and they're going to be presenting all the findings. It would be really fantastic if the public would come, see firsthand the work that went into it. And it's quite an impressive document, very data driven, very strategic. And it was, I think I want the town to see it because I think they'd be really proud of, of the work that went into it and certainly the output. Um, and just lastly, on that note, if you've read the plan, you'll notice that a couple of the recommendations involving, involve actually creating uh, new turf fields on some of the Board of Ed properties. Um, and Edison is the one that most comes to mind. So um, Jim and I already had a meeting with um, Margaret Dolan, uh, their business administrator, Dana Sullivan, who's on the steering committee, and co-chair uh, co chair and vice chair of the Board of Ed. And uh, to make sure that if we move forward on this recommendation, they'd be, uh, they'd be willing partners. And they were very enthusiastic and said they'd be happy to work with the town on a potential shared service agreement to move uh, turf fields at Edison forward. So we're going to put a working group together from Board of Ed and from the Recreation Commission to see kind of how, what that could look like and what the possibilities would be. So that was a very exciting revelation. So. That's it. It's been very busy, but we've done a lot. So, um, okay, on to the other stuff. I think we have a great presentation <clears throat> by our Historic Preservation Commission, right? So I'd like to welcome past chairman, Kelly Kessler, and new chairman, Maria Boys, to talk about Thank it. you, Mayor Brindle. I think it's, it's obvious you've been really slacking off these last two weeks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. Yeah, it was a, it's been a crazy one. Really. <laughs> That's fabulous. Um, so Maria, I'm, I'm 
Kelly Kessler, Vice Chair of the Commission, uh, Maria Boys, Chair of the Commission, um, and we're here tonight to uh, give um, Town Council an update on uh, the state of historic preservation in Westfield, what's gone on uh, with the Commission in 2019, um, and, and it was a really productive year for us, so um, it, it's positive stuff. Um, during 2019, the Commission approved three major applications. One was for an addition. Um, these are all two homes that are locally designated. One was for a garage, uh, a new build garage, um, and then one was for uh, plans for a new home on a historically designated property. Um, these, these properties are all locally designated. Um, additionally, uh, we welcomed four uh, new um, local landmarks to our list of historic landmarks, individually designated properties in 2019, um, which hasn't happened since the 90s. Um, so uh, two of them are town-owned properties. That would be the Reeve House, which is the historic society on Mountain Avenue. I think most of you are familiar. And Triangle Park, which I don't know if everyone is, but it, it's a spit of land kind of just across from the Reeve House um, on Mountain Avenue. Um, and uh, it has its own fascinating history that I wasn't familiar with until I, I did the report on Triangle Park in the process of designating it. Um, but again, two town-owned properties. So I, I really think this speaks volumes to um, our administration's um, support for historic preservation, um, and we look forward to having more uh, town-owned properties designated in the future. Um, then the two private residences that were designated, the Newell House, which is 603 Clark Street, Robert Newell, who's a member of the planning board, so we felt like that was also um, very symbolic that you know he's been chairing the planning board for a long time in this town, and that he would, uh, you know, and was also um, on the commission and chair of the commission, um, and that he would step forward and designate his own home, um, which he's so, so proud of, took me for a tour of his house, um, and I mean, um, knows the entire history of it, um, impeccable, you know, with Victorian impeccably painted and everything else. Um, so that was fun. Um, and then the Noldies, who they live down on, um, uh, 1737 Nevada Street, and and when Maria told me they wanted to designate their house, and they were both um, school teachers at Westfield High School, my husband had, um, I'm blanking on his first name, but Mr. Nolde is a history teacher um, in high school, said he was the best teacher he ever had, um, and, and Maria said they want to designate their house, and I'm driving down Central, and I'm like, you know, I'm almost out of Westfield, where is this house? And it's like the very, very last um, turnoff kind of that you can make before you get to the bridge to go over to Clark. And it's set back and you would not normally notice it and they are so proud and they took us for a tour of it. And, um, and they, they actually, you know, when they bought the house, the developer had a whole, his hand on a lot of other parcels and they bought the parcel in front of them as well. Um, which is why it's set back, back from Central. And so both that parcel and their home um, are now locally designated, um, which is a you know, huge, tells you a lot about them and, and, and a huge thing for the town of Westfield. Um, additionally, aside from the, uh, the, des the four designations we had, um, We've been meeting with residents on West Dudley, the portion that's a Clark of, across from um, Clark Park, which is part of the Roosevelt property. Um, that block, and we're talking to them about designate, desi locally designating that block as a district in the early stages of the conversations, um, looking very hopeful, and hopefully our update to town council in 2020, well, I'll be telling you that, that that's a district that was designated in 2020. Um, then, um, I, as a representative, myself as, uh, of the steering committee on the part of HPC, I attended uh, the master plan meetings throughout the year, and, th and I was thrilled, but I wasn't surprised to see that the majority of residents in Westfield 
80% value Westfield's historic neighborhoods um, and are extremely upset about these neighborhoods being slowly destroyed by teardowns. Um, that was a huge priority of theirs, and so I'm, uh, having grown up in the town as well, I see that, you know, it is kind of what is the heart of Westfield are these historic neighborhoods. Um, and so it, it kind of, uh, you know, um, made me um, happy that, you know, these, everybody else who maybe didn't grow up here but still sees that same value in the town. Um, and then I, I would also, I guess Westfield isn't alone. It seems to be a national trend. There was a survey conducted of millennials by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Um, and it stated, and I quote, that 90% of those surveyed feel that it's important to preserve buildings, architecture, neighborhoods, and communities. Um, the commission has also begun the process, process of updating our preservation plan, which is part of the town's master plan. And we're in conversations with a local architectural firm that specializes in our, uh, historic architecture to help us do that. And that work continues through 2020. Lastly, for my piece of it, um, Robert Wendell and I, along with um, our town attorney, town planner, have been working to ensure that Westfield's historic preservation ordinance is compliant with state land use law. Um, we look forward to the revised ordinance being approved by town council because this will allow the commission to become a certified local government with the state, um, which basically means that the commission will be recognized by the state as a legitimate commission and meets all its rules and regulations. Um, and as such, um, Westfield would be eligible for grant money um, for things for, for municipal, municipal and commercial projects as well as other educational services for its commission members. Um, so that's my bit, and I'm gonna turn it over to Maria, chair of the commission. Um, she'll speak to the community outreach things the commission has been doing in 2019. So thank you for having us. And, and Kelly, I'll just say thank you for your years of carrying the torch. And it wasn't always easy, but you persisted. And I think you're, I mean, we're really starting to see the fruits of your labor. So yeah, uh, well, I'm really happy to be able to stand up here and say all of this. Yeah, yes, it's absolutely. Really so thank you. Thank for you. That. Mm -hmm. And that's why I insisted Kelly presented. Yeah. This. Um, so I'll be quick. As part of, I'm wearing my glasses, so that's good. As part of our mission to increase communications and educate the public, we had three speaker events in the community room in 2019. The first one held in February was a combined meet and greet with members of the HPC, followed by a virtual walking tour by local architect and commission member Greg Blasey, who's known for his walking tours. In April, we welcomed Dorothy Guzzo, executive director of the New Jersey Historic Trust, who spoke about the economic benefits of historic preservation and particularly how it applies to downtown properties. And in June, we had the Devlin Awards presentation. Commission member Jenny Jaruzelski does an outstanding job in chairing uh, the Devlin Awards which was revived just two years ago. This year there were 10 awards for preservation and one special recognition award given to the Brass Shop as a partner in preservation. We were recently saddened to hear that the recipient, Margaret Giannone, who founded the shop in the 70s, has just passed away. She was considered a true daughter of Westfield and was from one of the last graduating class classes of Westfield High School on Elm Street. A final award was revived in 2019 after 15 years uh, the Student Art and Writing Contest, and was won by Shirzad Mustafa, a freshman at Westfield High School. I, I guess now he would be a sophomore. Uh, his winning entry, A Walk Down Boulevard, a poem which imagines the path taken by a housemaid at the turn of the century, was the winning entry. Um, our communications in the press was our best year ever, with dozens of articles uh, in all of the local media outlets, including the Westfield Leader, Westfield Monthly, Westfield Living, and J.com, Preservation NJ, and Tap into Westfield, uh, many of them authored by Jenny Jaruzelski. Many of these articles were also posted and shared on social media. Uh, we continue to use the HPC Facebook page with numerous posts for, posts for events, press, and outreach, and want to thank uh, Kim Ford for facilitating this process. And in May, National Preservation Month, I worked with David Marcus on the Media Advisory Council and we interviewed Robert and Pam Newell talking about their recently designated home, calling it a labor of love. Finally, the commission was grateful to have a budget this year. 
With it, we were able to hire a historic consultant who is in the final stages of revising our design guidelines, which will be available online. I spent the morning with her at the old high school in the archives. Uh, and after much research and consideration amongst members and with input from residents, we were able to order plaques for many of our historically designated homes. So I started them out. I don't know if they've been passed along. Um, we have one that is for the uh, district, the Kimball Avenue district or one district, and the other one for the individual homes. Uh, we chose a standardized design, brass oval, with a construction, construction date in the center, and the words says designated local historic landmark at the top. I'd like to thank Allison Carey for her work in researching these plaques. And on that note, we plan to present these plaques at, uh, to the homeowners at our next meeting, Monday, February 24th, which will be right here in this room, and we invite you all to attend. Additionally, we were able to purchase a few items to give out at our speaker series and to commemorate Westfield's 300th anniversary. And um, that representative of that is the hats. Feel free to try them on. <laughs> and as chair, I'm very proud of the work accomplished this year, and it would not have been possible without the dedication and ta dedicated and talented volunteers we have on the commission and, of course, the support of this administration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, now we get to work, I guess, right? Um, may I have a motion to approve the minutes from the Town Council Conference mm -hmm. Session, Executive Session, and regular meeting of January 14, 2020? So moved. Moved by Councilman Contract. Second? Second. Second by Councilman Dardia. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? This motion is carried. Do we have any petitions or communications? I'm here. Now it's time for open discussion by citizens. Anyone may come up to the microphone and speak to the council on any subject on which we have jurisdiction. Please state your name and address and limit your comments to 10 minutes. <laughs> Good timing. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council. Sorry for the sweaty look. I was practicing at uh, McKinley for the caper show. Oh. Um, I'm here to talk about the uh, recreation plan uh, that was released. Say, I'm sorry, your name. Oh, I'm sorry, your Sean Smith, 541 Cumberland Street, um, over in the McKinley District. Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about the recreation plan, the very, very lengthy recreation plan. I think it was about 500 pages or so. Um, and to say that as a citizen, I was happy to read that there was a full, uh, full blown analysis and, uh, and a real review of our recreation and parks within the town. What I was disappointed to read was that it confirmed the same thing I've been hearing before this council, both this administration and prior administrations, um, that it confirmed exactly what parents are complaining about, which is our fields are in horrendous shape, all of them. Not just the Board of Ed fields, not just some of the town fields, but all of them, including Sid Fay and Houlihan, which are the two turf fields that are used right now almost exclusively. Kaler will start getting some use, but they're in pretty bad shape. Um, I talked to this council a year ago, uh, six months ago, four months ago, about injuries that I personally witnessed on fields at Tamaquis, um, as well as some other issues that I've had with regard to soccer, where our fields were unplayable for our children who represent our town throughout the state. And while the recreation of uh, the plan, and I'm going to call it the plan because it's got a long term and a title and I know I'll get it wrong, um, is a great uh, document. It does exactly what I was concerned as a, as a citizen, which is it creates a, uh, a position where perfect becomes the enemy of good. Um, it is global. It is all-encompassing. It proposes turf fields at the middle schools to there. It proposes turf fields over on Elm. It proposes regrading Tamaquis and regrading Sycamore. It does a lot of great things at a cost of $40 million to the citizens. $27 million if you remove the proposed rec site. And the concern I have is what the plan doesn't have and doesn't really discuss, but it suggests, are agreements that have to be reached from a cost-sharing perspective between the Board of Ed and the Town Council. I'm shocked to learn that that doesn't exist already at any, any step. And I don't know if it's, I don't think it's this Council's fault or another Council's fault or the Board of Ed's fault. I think it's a town failure. Um, and there has to be leadership, and I'm looking to this, board, this body to get the Board of Ed in a room and figure out how to make this happen. I don't because want to interrupt. Were you here for my opening comments? I wasn't. You saw me running oh, at the end. So I addressed that in my opening comments. So, so as, a pub, as a public, we need that to happen, okay? 
Um, and, and not just words and not just lip service, but actual movement. And we need commitments from the council, we need commitments from the Board of Ed to actually have things happen. And as a town, we need to get behind it and not fight every aspect of it. I was in, um, I'm going to say the wrong town, it may have been Fair, uh, Franklin, Lake, Franklin Lakes with an adversary of mine who happens to be the, uh, the mayor. And he took me to the fields where they're lighted now. Lights are different. LED lights shine directly down. They are all computerized. They don't broadcast to the neighborhoods. Lights in um, baseball fields, they don't shine bright anymore. They point straight up at the sky so the kids in the outfield can actually see the fly ball. That technology is all there. Now, the plan suggests we should do it, but we've got to do it. And where my biggest concern in that plan is the immediate fields that are proposed are Board of Ed fields. They're not town fields. The town field proposals aren't for another three to five years. Well, the town had proposed fields three, two to three years ago. The Board of Ed had planned fields at turf fields in 2012, approved and just without funding. So what we need as a town is not to just have the little projects go by. And I promise, I know I'll see the zip lines. I know I'll see the dog parks. I'm sure the, the rink will move quietly to Memorial and where there's an outdoor bathroom and the facilities are there and that'll be regraded. And that'll probably happen quietly without much objection. But the part I'm most concerned about because of the sheer number of children that we have on the fields is that we're not going to take care of them. So please do your best. Get them in a room. Your stakeholders will come. I promise you there are many interested ones if the clubs haven't already left the town. And some of your clubs are leaving the town and they're leaving it by signing long-term contracts out of the town. And our Westfield kids are not playing home games in their hometown because of that. Thank you. So I'll just, I just comment a bit. So um, you're preaching to the choir a little bit about um, that stuff. And what I think you missed is we met with the Board of Ed last week and to confirm that they were comfortable moving forward to discuss a shared service agreement and they're totally open to it. We had lunch with the Mayor of Metuchen today who also happens to be an attorney for 50 Board of Eds across the, the state, including Woodbridge. And Woodbridge is the model for shared service agreements for schools and uh, and 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 it's, it's not difficult to do. So, um, and I, you said some of these things are easy and quiet, but I would actually disagree with some of that assessment. And my suggest, I assume you're gonna go to the Recreation Commission meeting next week. I would, I would suggest that because I think they're gonna be discussing priorities and a plan forward. And the only thing I'll say, um, it is a very ambitious parks plan, but money is, I mean, money's an issue. And we will need the cooperation and collaboration from the teams and the sports to help us figure out how we're going to end up funding the priorities because there's no way we're going to be able to do it all at once. So, um, but I think we're all on the same page here. So, which is, uh, which is a good, it's a matter of which ones we're going to tackle first. And that's the, we're looking for that guidance from the Recreation Commission. Mayor, yeah. I, I'd also like to address Sean. Um, so uh, again, I'd uh, like to echo the, the mayor's uh, thoughts there, Sean. And um, Sean, and, uh, <laughs> and would also encourage you to, if you can, uh, get these sports teams out to the Recreation Commission meeting next week. Uh, get them to uh, present what their priorities are. Let it be known to the commissioners what their thoughts are. And um, there, I would expect the Board of Ed will be there as well. There's always a, a representative there. Um, so there's your opportunity again. Anybody else? Um, okay, hearing none, I close this portion of the meeting and move to bills and claims. Thank you, Mayor. Um, subbing for Councilwoman Hagrid, who couldn't be here. I have six resolutions, five of which I'd like to move as a package. First, a resolution authorizing the CFO to prepare warrants for postage payment in connection with tax assessment notices to property owners. The second is a resolution authorizing the CFO to draw warrants for 2017 to 19 pursuant to Tax Court of New Jersey. Third is a resolution authorizing the CFO to refund parking and road opening permit fees. Uh, the fourth is a resolution authorizing the CFO to issue warrants for special district taxes. And the fifth is a resolution authorizing the CFO to issue warrants for Union County and Union County open space taxes. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Mackey. Any discussion? Sorry. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? 
This motion is carried. So yes. Sorry, I flipped back. the page too soon. My apologies. Uh, let's do bills and claims in the amount of five hundred and forty-one thousand two hundred thirteen dollars and thirty-eight cents. May I have a second? Second. Second, second by Councilman Magrippo. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed. Aye. This motion is carried. And lastly, I'd like to move a resolution authorizing the CFO to make budget transfers. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Grippo. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Habgood. Councilman Parmalee. Yes. Councilman Legrippo. Yes. Councilman Katz. Yes. Councilwoman Mackey. Yes. Councilman Contract. Yes. Councilman Dardia. Yes. Councilman Boyce. Yes. Mayor Brindle. Yes. This motion is carried. Next is the Public Safety Transportation Parking Committee. Councilman Dardia. Yes, Mayor. I would like to move the, for adoption of a resolution for a point <coughs> to appoint an on-call traffic consultant. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Contract. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Yes. Opposed? This motion is carried. Our code review and town property, please. Thank you, Mayor. I move for the adoption of a resolution calling for a study commission to review the Open Public Records Act. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Boyes. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Aye. This motion is carried. I also have two ordinances for introduction this evening. The first is General Ordinance Number 2156, an ordinance amending the Code of the Town of Westfield, New Jersey, in order to, to expand the board of the District Management Corporation of the Town of Westfield. I would like to move General Ordinance Number 2156 on first reading. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Katz. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Habgood. Councilman Parmalee. Yes. Councilman Legrippo. Yes. Councilman Katz. Yes. Councilwoman Mackey. Yes. Councilman Contract. Yes. Councilman Dardia. Yes. Councilman Boys. Yes. Mayor Brindle. Yes. This motion is carried. I would like to move General Ordinance Number 2157 on first reading, an ordinance establishing the Westfield Access and Inclusivity Council for the Town of Westfield. May I have a second? Second. Second, second by Councilor Grippo. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Habgood. Councilman Parmalee. Yes. Councilman Grippo. Yes. Councilman Katz. Yes. Councilwoman Mackey. Yes. Councilman Contract. Yes. Councilman Dardia. Yes. Councilman Boys. Yes. <coughs> Mayor Brindle. Yes. This motion is carried. Last is the Public Works Committee. Councilman Contract. Uh, I have a resolution to award a contract for the grinding of brush material. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Dardia. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Habgood. Councilman Parmalee. Yes. Councilman Legrippo. Yes. Councilman Katz. Yes. Councilwoman Mackey. Yes. Councilman Contract. Yes. Councilman Dardia. Yes. Councilman Boys. Yes. Mayor Brindle. Yes. This motion is carried. The reports from department heads are accepted. Anything else? Good. May I have a motion to adjourn? Move. So move. So move. Motion by Councilman Grippo. Second. Second. Second by Councilman Darty. All in favor? Yes. yes. Right. So this motion is carried, and this meeting is adjourned. Yeah. Got a hat select.